Welcome, everybody. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, or whatever time it is when you're watching this webinar. My name is Kai Rivera, and I will be moderating this webinar. Uh, I'm joined by Dr. Laura Cuddy from Veterinary Specialist Ireland. Very happy to, to speak with her today about her story about the, the facility itself and, and the growth that they've had for the past couple of years. Um, this will be a webinar uh, that's recorded and a uh, link to that will be provided to you afterwards. A couple of housekeeping items. The audience uh, microphones will be muted. Please type any questions in the Q&A chat and we'll respond uh, to the questions near the end. Uh, sit back, relax, and uh, enjoy the conversation between me and Dr. Cuddy. Um, how VSI Veterinary Specialist Ireland adapted to rising demand with Horos and Pervy Light. Uh, welcome, Dr. Cuddy. Good afternoon to you in Ireland. How are things going? Thank you, Kai. Um, it's a pleasure to be here and thank you for the invitation. Things are good. So just a slight break in the clinic day and then we'll head back and be using all of these tools as normal on the floor. Sure. Yeah. And and from uh, that's a good starting point. So uh, can you tell us a little bit about uh, who you are, who's Veterinary Specialist Ireland? Some of the audience members may have read the user story. Some of them may be hearing about you for the first time. So can you introduce us to who you are, um, what, what the practice is and, and a little bit about that? Yeah, thank you, Kai. So um, Veterinary Specialist Ireland, we are a private specialist only hospital uh, situated in Ireland. Uh, we are situated about 30 minutes outside of Dublin in the countryside, and we're pretty much the only specialist only hospital for pets in the Republic of Ireland. And so we receive referrals from all over the country. People drive hours essentially to come to our facility for appointments with specialists in various disciplines. And we don't see any routine general practice work. It's all specialty referral work. So every appointment is seen by referral. As well as that, we also have an emergency clinic. So we have a 24 seven emergency clinic that does see regular primary care emergencies as well um, at all times. And again, it's one of the only emergency clinics available in our locality for pets um, with serious medical conditions. Right. So our specialties are very wide ranging. So my husband and I founded the practice in 2019. So we were just over three years old and we started with just three of us and uh, we built a, a fairly decent sized hospital and said, oh, hopefully this works out. We kind of started from scratch and we started with surgery, sports medicine, rehabilitation. And since then, especially with COVID, we've seen a really rapid boom in pet ownership in Ireland and also the willingness of people who want to pursue advanced diagnostics and treatments for their pets. And so now our hospital has almost 50 staff. We have multiple disciplines, internal medicine, emergency critical care, nutrition, integrative medicine, and we're just about to add a cardiology service as well. And so we've seen a really big growth in our hospital over the last three years. Right, wow. Yeah, and as a uh, as a first time pet owner during COVID, uh, I, I can I, I can tell from my experience that um, it is is anecdotally happening, right? Um, so in that, you mentioned that uh, just just curious question. You mentioned that uh, patients or the owners are driving their patients for hours and hours. Can you tell us a little bit about how the relationship between you and your referring physicians uh, has been impacted during the, the during the pandemic? Yeah, Ireland, I mean, we're a fairly small population. The total population of Ireland, you know, is, is, is very small compared to other states. And so a lot of the vets, we have, uh, you know, a few thousand vets in the country. And so most of us know each other relatively well. We all, a lot of us went to college together. There's one vet school in the island of Ireland at the moment. And so many of us know each other relatively well. And so um, even though clients might be driving from three hours away, it's often because their vet has picked up my cell phone and rung and said, hey, I'm sending this person up to you, look after them. And so our referring vet community is, is relatively small and, and very well uh, networked. Um, and we have a really good relationship with our referring vets. They're very important to us that they're kept informed in what's happening. And equally, many of them are curious of, of what we've done and what imaging we've done and, and want to potentially see these imaging modalities. Um, we're the only private center with a, a high field uh, MRI on site. And so that certainly is a big draw. A lot of, of uh, our patients are transferred specifically for MRI imaging or neurosurgery. And so they're particularly the patients that do drive four hours are going to be those really advanced uh, modality patients. Right. And talking about 
the communication, right? So you you are the only one uh, in 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 the area that provides these type of services. Can you tell us a little bit about how uh, you started or uh, providing those services a couple of years ago, and what challenges you may have run into? Yeah. Um, so we started as said, essentially from ground zero and we started with this very nice facility and we, we added stuff as people grew and equipment grew and um, some of the, the challenges I guess we faced was specifically relating to imaging was local storage of images on different modalities and so we started with an x-ray and a CT and an ultrasound and um, but everything stored locally and then we added a couple of fluoro machines then we added another ultrasound and then we added an MRI and then all of a sudden we have nothing talking to anything else everything is is doing its own thing and so growth was was really great for us but then managing the personnel and the technology to keep up with the growth and the communication part of things we've really had to try and, and try and stay ahead of it you never want to get up to a point where you've fallen behind so trying to predict and, and stay ahead of that was a bit challenging Right. And um, I'm not a veterinarian. So can you tell me a little bit about the turnaround times that you all are looking at? Um, what 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 kind of timelines are we looking at here? Yeah, so usually we try to keep our, our appointment times our time to appointment relatively short. Mm -hmm. And that's something that we, we really instill that philosophy in all of our clinicians, we want as soon as possible seen because pet owners, if something is wrong with their pet, they don't really want to wait. They want that that patient see no one wants to wait for an appointment. And so it depends on how ill the patient is. If it's a very ill patient, they're seen straight away through our critical care department. For example, a cruciate injury in a dog. Traditionally, in other places in the world, you could wait eight to 12 weeks. Our general waiting time would be two to five working days before that you get an appointment. And then surgery would usually be scheduled within, again, either same day or two to five working days after that. So we try to keep the time from initial consultation to surgery as short as we can. And that's for comfort of the pet, comfort of the client, um, and also trying to reduce the morbidity it has with not treating these diseases for a long time. So generally, People will come for an appointment. We do some work with the insurance companies. So sometimes that requires us to liaise with insurance companies to get approval for certain tests or treatments. And often that's the, the bigger delay for us is just getting approval from insurance companies prior to treatment. Um, and then we obviously keep hospitalized patients as, as long as we need to keep them for their post-operative recovery and then try to get them home to their owners as soon right. as is reasonable to kind of facilitate and speed recovery. Right. Wow. So very, very fast turnaround times is, is what I'm hearing. Uh, yeah. and it's instilled from the top to the bottom so we try to and particularly for advanced imaging so if a patient comes in for example for cancer screening they'll usually have their ct scan on the same day and um, they're not going to go home necessarily and come back for a ct scan they'll often have their imaging or any other tests they need done the same day yeah and and talking about imaging um this, as you as some of the audience knows this is um uh, powered often by by Horos. So can you tell us a little bit about how you found Horos? How did you use it in the beginning? Uh, how, you know, how did you find out about Horos actually? Yeah, I've, I've been a Horus user, a loyal Horus user for a long time. And part of that is I, I did my residency training in the United States. And so I was at the University of Florida for five years for my internship, master's and in residency. And there we used Horus as a DICOM viewer um, and it found it a very useful tool, to be honest, as regards it's a very user friendly tool for people who are not necessarily imaged. We're vets, we're, we're not IT professionals, we're not uh, full-time radiologists. And so we need a tool that is accessible and relatively simple to use. And so I have been using Horus for many years. I then returned from the States and I was working in the university for several years and Horus was their main viewer. Um, and then equally Horus kind of, it's just a very easy access DICOM viewer, it's loaded in pretty much all of our devices and has been. And when you're used to using something as a DICOM viewer, I think it becomes very intuitive. So Horus is still widespread used as our main DICOM viewer in most of our workstations and in most of our personal laptops, etc. Most of us use Horus as our, our regular viewer. Now, the downside was before we integrated with Purview, we were using Horus as a local storage for some of our machines, which right. Horus is not designed to be a local storage. So you can do it, but eventually it gets to a point where Horus gets clogged. It's not designed to be storage. And so that's a that was something that made us lead to, right, we need a better solution than localized Horus storage for these studies. That is not really a solution as regards storage. Right. And as you mentioned, um, there, are, there are quite a number of machines, I believe there are maybe six or seven. 
that you have, right? And so it sounded like um, in the beginning, all of those scans would be stored on the machine or some sort of workstation locally. So can you tell us a little bit about how uh, some of the growing pains uh, scaling from, from one machine to two to five to seven and trying to manage all that in addition to uh, the communication back and forth between the owner and uh, any referring yeah, vets? Absolutely. And um, this was something that was a little bit of a bugbear. So when we started the hospital, you're kind of worried about actually getting the machines in and actually getting, you know, cases through the door and 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 lots of different things coming at you from every different direction. And the storages of images and the ability to retrieve images was always a priority for us. But equally, it became something that we weren't able to efficiently deal with. And so we ended up using local storage. Mm -hmm. So they were stored on each device, for example. So the x-ray machine, they were just stored in the x-ray machine. And um, for the CT, they were stored in a nearby workstation. And then equally with the MRI, the same. The caveat to that being we wanted to have a good backup for it. Um, but equally trying to get each machine to talk to a backup, a centralized backup, especially when you're not awfully proficient in IT can be quite a challenge. And so that's something that we struggled with. We really wanted a centralized backup. Number one being, if you wanted an image, you didn't have to go to that specific device and go looking for it and try and get a USB stick and pull it off. And then you can't find it or somebody's wiped it. And equally, um, for legal reasons, you really need to have a backup of all of these images for several years. And so for us, it became more and more important. The more images we acquired and the busier our machines became and the more machines we got, it became essential that we had a reliable backup that even if a local storage drive, there was an issue, well, at least it didn't matter. They're stored elsewhere in another device and we can retrieve them. And so there were a lot of headaches at the beginning with you know, potentially mislabeled images or images that could not be located or trying to pull them off with USB sticks and then put them on a different device and show them to an owner. We did struggle with that and you lose time. It's not very efficient to do that. Um, and so that was probably our biggest bugbear was the localized storage on each device that was not well backed up. Right. And so in searching for the solutions, uh, how did you come across uh, Purview from Horos? We had investigated several solutions before. And so when you go to trade shows or veterinary shows and invariably you'll meet software companies and there are companies who deal with our situation as regards a pack storage for uh, storage archiving and retrieval. I guess the issues we faced into with those was number one, many of them required hardware upgrades. So we'd have to actually physically buy hard drives, et cetera, for hard storage on site. Many of them had pretty... Um, difficult, I would say, for veterinary to deal with licensing fees and fees for storage. And so suddenly you're looking at going, this is not something that's actually generating revenue. It's something we have to do, but it's not a revenue generator. And so it's very difficult then to be, you know, giving a certain subscription per year, for example, that doesn't seem reasonable to store, archive and retrieve images. It's very important, but when it's not generating income, it's difficult. And so we struggled a little bit with these companies as regards hardware upgrades, et cetera. Um, how we came across Purview was by email communication. So as I said, I've been a long time Horace user, so watch Horace updates. Um, and then I got a communication regarding Purview and said, this looks interesting. I don't know if it's applicable to us. At the time, it looked like it was being used by smaller medical facilities, dental, et cetera. Not sure would this be useful for veterinary, but our workflow would be fairly similar. So surely this could be quite useful. And then we had an introductory meeting, which was very helpful as regards what it would take for us to trial purview and actually see would it work for us. Um, and I was very pleasantly surprised. All of the, the things I was looking for seemed to be things that Purview could offer, which always is a bit of a red flag. There must be something there that's that's not going to work. Um, but equally, most of the problems we were facing, there seemed to be relatively straightforward solutions for. And so number one was the centralized image backup. So our machines now all talk to Purview and they just via the IP address, somebody and, you know, Kai actually was very instrumental in setup, got all of our IP addresses, got all the machines connected, the machines connect to Purview and the images get sent. So we're not relying on manual uploading of images. These images are just going to be stored. And um, number two is remote access. So 
are specialists on the weekend, maybe at home, and they're requested to look at a CT scan of a patient in the hospital on call. And so instead of them having to drive in or somebody trying to zip a file and you know file transfer it to them at home, they can log into Purview, uh, download it into Horus and open the, the file. And so remote access of images from anywhere in the world at any time was very helpful for us. The last thing I guess was, or two other things, is the economic feasibility, which for vets, I think it's very reasonable. You pay, depending on how many images or studies you're going to need to store. Um, and then the last thing was the ability to share images. So a lot of our referring vets or clients are interested to see the images. And so equally before we might have had to download them, zip them, file transfer them. Now we can just click a link and share to a client or a vet. They can access the images, they can get their viewer. And equally, it's quite easy for us to load any, for example, x-ray images into our orthopedic planning software for fracture repair, et cetera. So how I came across it was simply by a simple email communication, but equally it got us to a point quite quickly of this provides a lot of solutions to the problems we're facing. Wow. Yeah, and uh, one of the things that's interesting about that is since you use Horos and since your clinicians and staff use Horos as the main viewer, the actual version of Purview you're using is light. So um, yeah. as as some of the some of the audience might know, Purview provides a web based viewer that works on PC and Mac. And for 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 your practice, it was uh, it was more useful to simply continue using Horos since you've been using that for such a long time. So the the benefit of that is you can still get the remote access, like you mentioned, you can still share the files quickly mm -hmm. uh, through the central database without having to use uh, zipping and other sharing mm -hmm. methods. So it's still uh, solving many of the problems. And can you tell us a little bit about uh, the implementation process and the support that you've received? You mentioned earlier that um, uh, other other uh, vendors perhaps would require hardware and, and mm -hmm. upgrades and things like that. So can you tell us a little bit about making the jump from Horos yeah. to the cloud? I have to say the the implementation was, again, easier than we expected. So again, whenever you implement a new system, you always anticipate teething problems. And of course, there are issues getting some of the machines to speak to Purview, and especially to speak there automatically. But it was all very straightforward, the implementation, um, as regards integration with our existing systems and troubleshooting the ones that didn't want to talk. That was all done remotely and by phone call. And I have to say the team were very good about facilitating timely phone calls. You know, you'd send in a message and be like, great, we can have a you know video call today at two and see if we can figure it out. And so really it didn't require, there was a very good support from Purview, but from our point of view, it didn't require much effort on our part to get everything linked up. The main thing we I had to do was put in the users that use the systems and their permissions, which is a couple of clicks of a button, send them an email, and then they can log into the system. So that was the most difficult thing on my part. The actual system itself was quite intuitive. And so we didn't really need to to provide much in the way of staff training because the system is, is very intuitive to actually use. So from our point of view, we it required very little input from us and the input we had from Purview was very helpful and timely. Great, that's great to hear. And um, yeah, so one, one of the things that, uh, that, that I'd like to know is now you have the cloud storage, now you have an integrated solution between Horos and all the different machines. Um, what's next for Vendor Specialist Ireland? How, how are you empowered to scale the business? Uh, as you mentioned, pet ownership has grown over the past couple of years. Um, uh, the, the pandemic, uh, the initial stages of it was uh, three years ago at this point. So um, we talked about how things have, have changed. Well, what's, what's coming up next for VSI? Yeah, we, we have a lot of uh, things changing in the next year for our practice. And so our own practice is growing um, quite a bit. So we're adding subspecialties all the time. So we have all the main specialties. We're adding a cardiology service, which again adds a whole new uh, level of scanning. So we'll have another dedicated cardiology uh, scanner available. So we're adding new devices to our own network and expanding our hospital, but equally expanding to extra sites outside of our own hospital. And so that's where the cloud base will be helpful for us in that any patients acquired in any facility, uh, any of those images can be can be essentially retrieved uh, centrally. And so that will be something that will be a change for us in the coming uh, year will be multi-site. Great. That's great to hear. 
And uh, with, with that, let's open it up for some of the, um, the Q&A. Uh, there's some questions coming in from the audience here. Let me check on my side. So one of them was, uh, Dr. Cuddy, can you share uh, or can you explain how you share uh, access with the clients? Um, is it easy for them to view and access? Uh, that's a good question. So usually on the Purview Viewer, you have a couple of options. You can download the images to Horus so that you can launch them to look at them yourself. You can download them to a separate file, which we do if we want to put them into our orthopedic software, or you can share a link to the file and then you just type in the email address. Now, as far as I'm aware, they also get a viewer that they can see the images. Correct me if I'm wrong, Kai, that they get a viewer with it. Right. So for the full purview image suite, uh, there's yeah. the web viewer in, uh, uh, shared with the link. And for this version, we're talking about a purview light, which is uh, everything but. Yeah, exactly. And so then most of the vets we share with, because it's mostly vets requesting the images, most of the vets we share with will have DICOM viewers, and then they just load them into their DICOM viewer. Great. And um, in terms of the actual, uh, some of the tools uh, in Horos, is there anything specific that you all are using? I mean, you're using it for surgery. Are you are you doing anything with the patients um, themselves? Or sorry, not the patients, the owners of the pets? Ah, yes. One thing we discovered um, after a little bit of research was that there is a Horus mobile app. And so what we've done actually is we've downloaded that onto iPad. So our clinic is completely paperless. So we work everything on iPad, computer, et cetera. And so what we have on the iPads that go around the hospital, each doctor can take it into a consult room. It has a Horus mobile app on it and it is connected to our purview. So you can pick any, even a CT or an MRI for that specific patient. You can download it onto the app and you can actually project it. So we then mirror it to a TV screen in the treatment room or the consultation room with the client. And we can show them 3D reconstructions of example for a CAT scan or an MRI scan and go through everything with them. That's something we have found to be very helpful as regards, particularly when clients are paying out of pocket or they're worried, you can actually show them what we are doing, you know, why we're doing these tests, explain to them potentially what treatment will involve. And I feel like physically seeing an image makes a really big difference to their understanding of what the problem is and what we need to do to fix it. So that's something we've implemented in each of our consultation rooms. And it just requires that you have the iPad with the Horus mobile app. Again, we had a really good support from Purview in getting that linked to our Purview so we can pull the images into the app. And then we just mirror them to a screen and show the client. So for us as well, it's really important that our clients see that we are using the most up-to-date things. We are pushing the boundaries with technology and they know that we're doing that. And this helps to show them as well that we are doing that with everything that we do. Right. So I imagine it's it's a, a bit of a wow factor, right? If, if you take the example of the, the, the owner who's driving four hours, then they yeah. see the visuals and they see the advanced technology. It, it, it shows how... Um, progressive and innovative, you know, veterinary specialist Ireland is, and it's very helpful for them to understand what the next steps are in collaboration exactly. with, with your Exactly. Doctor. If we can show it and point it out and uh, suddenly it all starts to make a bit more sense. And what's helpful for that in horror, so you can do a lot of 3D reconstructions, for example, of CT scans. And when people can actually see it in a 3D model, again, it makes so much more sense than trying to imagine it from what radiologists or we would look at in, a, in, a, in an NPR. It's much more simple, for example, if you have a dog with um, patellar luxation or kneecap dislocation is very common in dogs. And so we can do a CT scan, we can 3D reconstruct the legs, we can project that on the screen and show them the abnormalities in the actual bones and any angulations. And suddenly the surgery we're talking about makes a lot more sense to people when they can actually see what's wrong. Right, right. And so it, it sounds like the, uh, from, from what I'm hearing, the, the ability to access has been has been solved from from any anywhere essential whether it's home or at the clinic uh the problem of local storage only uh has been solved through the, the 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 centralized database and the ability to visualize and provide you know access uh to to whoever needs it has been solved through through horos and purview light um that that's all that's all super awesome to hear it's all great to hear and i'm happy to um have been able to been with you from the beginning of that story actually because we worked together uh, perhaps yeah. it was last year to actually get that started so for the next steps um we're, we're happy to help you out as you set up uh, additional machines or uh, get other um, locations set up as you mentioned 
very easy to, to work with Purview. So we're happy to help in any way. Um, one of the questions uh, that, that I had for you, Dr. Cuddy, was um, about you as a, as a veterinarian, as a surgeon. Can you tell me a little bit more about when you knew that you wanted to be a vet or how did that, how did that start in your life? Yeah, I'm very much a cliche. I kind of always knew I wanted to be a vet ever since I was a small child. Anytime anyone asked me, I wanted to be a vet. But it's actually an interesting story. And so when I was growing up in Ireland, there were not very many specialists in Ireland. And worldwide, there weren't very many board certified specialists. But one of our local vets was a board certified surgeon. And so never mind wanting to be a vet, really from the age of about 15, I knew I wanted to be a surgeon. And that was it. And because I had seen what he could do and, you know, he was there, to, you know, fixing these complex fractures and hip replacements. And so and in Ireland at that point, you know, I won't say how old I am now, but over 20 years ago, that was a, a big deal. And um, Ireland has caught up a lot in the last 20, 30 years. But at the time, we still had a lot to do to catch up with the US and the UK. And so I kind of knew I wanted to be a surgeon. And then my path through vet school, I kind of learned what it takes to become a surgeon and knew I would prefer to go to the States to train. And so I ended up in Florida for five years with a really um, amazing residency program at the University of Florida. And um, then came home and decided that we would set this practice up after several years. And really what we wanted to do was emulate what we had seen in the States and what the standard of care could be and what the turnaround time could be and what the customer service could be. And that's something that was somewhat lacking in Ireland at the time. Um, and so it's been a big adventure the last few years. It's a it's a job you have to really like what you do. So I think it is a vocation. Everyone kind of says, I always knew I wanted to do it and it's a vocation. But it is. It's not a glamorous job. You know, it's a it's a difficult job. And, you know, we do it because we want to help pets, but there's lots of difficult decisions and you want to try and make the the right ones. But yeah, it's a, I was very inspired from a young age by a very good surgeon. And the nice thing now is he's actually joined our team. So he works with us now. And um, so it's all kind of come full circle which is a, a really nice thing. That is beautiful. That is awesome. Thank you for sharing that, Dr. Cuddy. And uh, we hope that, you know, through the work that you do, you can inspire, you know, the next generation as well. Um, so with that, uh, we'll uh, start to wrap up the webinar. Uh, thank you, Dr. Cuddy, for uh, sharing your story. Um, we appreciate uh, everything that you do for the little pets in Ireland, and we look forward to, to, to talking with you soon. Uh, so what's what's next? Um, check your email. There's going to be uh, some more email communication about Horos and Purview coming soon. Um, and next up for our webinar, so we're going to be talking with uh, Dr. Stephen James. Uh, uh, he is a uh, an orthopedic surgeon and a pilot uh, that travels across uh, uh, the southern United States. Um, and he uh, uses Purview to be able to review images from anywhere. So stay tuned for for the dates on that. Um, we will uh, send a recording of this webinar out to uh, those in attendance. And if we missed you, uh, well, be sure to watch uh, this video and we'll, we'll answer any question that you have. If we didn't um, get to your question today, feel free to send us an email. We'll be able to respond to it when we can. And uh, we look forward to talking to you uh, all next time. Thank you very much, Dr. Cuddy. Have a great afternoon. Thank you.